बसमीम् Assalamualaikum how are you students today our course is inorganic material chemistry and course code is cam 3115 in this subject we will discuss properties of advanced materials in your syllabus there are different properties of advanced materials mechanical properties electrical properties optical properties dielectric magnetic and some chemical corrosion properties that you have to uh, study in this course first we will start we will start from mechanical properties in this lecture we will discuss mechanical properties and its detail in previous lecture we have discussed properties of advanced materials and in uh, here our topic is Uh, main topic is mechanical properties then in this uh, properties we have discussed stress stress strain hardness and strength and elasticity plasticity ductility brittleness toughness and malleability then we discussed what are advanced materials and what are nano materials and we uh, generally discussed the properties of advanced materials and then uh, we move toward mechanical properties so previously we uh, discussed uh, uh, we start uh, characteristics of mechanical properties so that was not completed so today we will start from the uh, characteristics of nano materials in previous lecture uh, we discussed properties of advanced materials and out of different properties first uh, we discussed mechanical properties key concepts that discussed uh, we discussed in previous lectures are mechanical properties of advanced materials and uh, first we discussed general properties of advanced materials then we discussed mechanical properties and in mechanical properties we discussed different terms that include stress strain hardness strength elasticity plasticity ductility brittleness toughness malleability when we talk about mechanical properties all these terms we should know in our mind and we should know about it and next advanced materials and uh, nanomaterials their introduction what are advanced materials what are nanomaterials and the properties of advanced materials and uh, mechanical properties of advanced materials and uh, in previous lecture we discussed uh, up to uh, mechanical properties of advanced materials and there uh, we discussed the uh, uh, up to mechanical properties but uh, uh, till characteristics of mechanical property uh, characteristics of nanomaterials with related to mechanical properties so in this lecture uh, uh, next lecture and we will discuss the characteristics and applications of uh, nanomaterials with related to mechanical property first we define and explain mechanical properties that properties which can be determined are observed by application of mechanical force load or stress are known as mechanical properties here we also explain uh, mechanical properties in detail next that we discuss is the uh, stress and strain and we said that stress and strain both depends upon uh, magnitude of uh, that mechanical properties depends on the stress or strain we said that uh, material is subjected to stress they may deform they may elongate or they can break so it depends upon the magnitude of that load or stress or it also depends on uh, nature of materials then we discuss about stress so stress is a, a force divided by cross sectional area this a not is cross sectional area here force is applied and stress is sigma is equal to force divided by cross section area and strain is a dimensional response 
we said that it is strain is change in length divided by original length. For example, here we apply a force and its original length was L. And when we uh, remove, uh, when we apply the force, then its uh, length is changed to delta L. This is change in length. So strain is uh, a change in length divided by original length. Then is the hardness. Uh, hardness is a property of material that resists penetration. In this figure you can see if you apply a force, if it resists in the penetration of this uh, uh, material, then it is uh, known as that uh, this material is a hard material or it, uh, this material it has hardening property. Strength is a property of material that resists the external force without breaking and it determines uh, the ability of material to withstand uh, stress without failure. And here in this example you can see that if we apply a stress then it uh, uh, resists the external uh, stress and it will not break. Here you can also see its example. In elasticity, the property of material by which it returns to its original shape after removal of load. Here we apply a force on material whose length is L and its length is changed when we apply a force it's elongated that become delta L and when it uh, force is removed it returns back to its original shape whose length was L. You can take the example of elastic here. Here we also take the example this is original length and this is the position of atoms how atoms are arranged before applying force and after applying force and after removal of force. Here is length is L. Here we applied force. There is a change in length of that material. And here you can see bonds are stretched. But when we uh, when force is removed, you can see the length it comes to its original length, same like first one. And the bonds uh, bonds are uh, returned to its original or initial position. So elastic means that this property is reversible. Next, we take the example of plasticity, that property of material by which permanent material deformation takes place after removal of load or force. We can say that elasticity, uh, plasticity is the uh, opposite of elasticity. In elasticity, if we remove a load or if we remove a force, that material returns to its original position, its original length. Uh, our original shape but in case of plasticity for example here we apply a force uh, on material whose length is L but after removing the force it's elongate to delta L but when we remove that force it will not come back to its original shape so it means this material has plasticity in it we can say that plasticity of material is its ability to undergo some degree of permanent deformation without rupture or failure. So here uh, we can take the example according to um, length and bond arrangements. In this you can see this is original length when, and this is the position of bonds present in that material. Here we in, uh, apply a force and after applying a force its length is increased and bonds are stretched but here you can see that when you remove that force the length is it returns to its original it return it tried to return to its original position but not completely it returned to its original position so here also this you can see here the bonds position is not similar to the original bond position. So we can say that plasticity is a permanent deformation without rupture or failure. This curve shows a stress strain curve that shows elasticity and plasticity of materials with related that is related to stress and strain. Then we said ductility. Ductility is a property of material 
by which it can be drawn into thin wires without any rupture and brittleness is a property of material in which no deformation takes place by external force and it may break a rupture so uh, this is example of ductile material in which the deformation is takes place but it uh, uh, it will not rupture but here you can see that when you apply a force is directly break it will break like uh, you can take the example of glass here and toughness is a property of material by which it can uh, be uh, twisted or it can bend or it can stretch under high stress without rupture here you can see that you can bend the material you can twist it or you can stretch it and there will be no rupture then this material property is known as toughness malleability or malleability of material its ability to be uh, flattened or stretched into thin sheets without cracking or without rupture gold is an uh, example of this malleable material then we discussed about advanced materials that advanced materials can be a material which has engineered properties that are created uh, by the by the development of specialized process or synthesis methodology next are nanomaterials and nanomaterials are that materials which have at least one dimension in the range of 1 to 100 nanometers and their properties are different from the bulk materials then we discuss general properties of advanced materials that can be due to uh, nanometer uh, materials has uh, better properties due to a uh, large fraction of surface atoms and they have high surface energy if uh, size is smaller than they are mostly uh, have higher surface energy and uh, less stability and due to uh, reduced imperfections or dislocations uh, they have less uh, defects in it uh, than as compared to bulk material so their properties are better than the uh, bulk materials another important factor or important uh, reason for uh, having uh, good properties of nanomaterials than bulk materials nanomaterials have a large surface to volume ratio their uh, number of atoms are uh, atoms or surface atoms are exposed so they can be used as a good catalyst they, are, they could be used as a chemical sensors and other many other properties then we we'll talk about mechanical properties of advanced materials and uh, we said that uh, mechanical properties uh, increase with the decreases in size because they have less imperfections they has less defects or vacancies or dislocations uh, so uh, we can say that uh, their uh, hardness strength or other properties are uh, toughness or elasticity are more due to these less defects or less imperfections then we take the examples of uh, some filling polymers that are uh, filled with nanoparticles or nano rods and they have a very good properties mechanical properties as compared to only uh, as compared to single polymers without nanoparticles then we discuss that this type of filling uh, fillers and the way in which that fillers are um, uh, filled into that uh, polymer are very important and also aggregation is another pro uh, phenomena which can reduce the uh, mechanical properties of that materials so uh, shape of filler and the particle uh, are platelets are uh, um, uh, platelets uh, shape uh, the degree of aggregation are important for the to check the properties or to modify the mechanical properties then we talk about some uh, shearing forces are exerted on ionic crystals then how they can uh, cause the cleavage and how they can slide on uh, one another and today we will start topic from here that are characteristics of nanomaterial with respect to mechanical properties so if we talk about characteristics of nanomaterial with respect to mechanical properties we can say that by uh, reducing the uh, grain size lighter material with enhanced mechanical properties can be produced for example if the size of material is less and its grain size is smaller grain size it means one its crystallites is smaller 
then material will be uh, lighter and with light material we can produce uh, mechanically strong materials so nanograins are more resistant since they have no defect inside as compared to microgreens so we can say that nanocrystalline copper is three times more resistant than usual copper because nanocrystalline copper has less defects due to which it will be stronger or more mechanical mechanically more strong so they are also more ductile since nanograins nanograin glide is much easier so they can be converted into wires because these nanograins are uh, nanograins uh, glide uh, can glide or slide onto each other and we can convert them into uh, wires so uh, elasticity uh, we uh, they will discuss elasticity with related to uh, mechanical properties of nanomaterials before we already discussed uh, this uh, elasticity term and its uh, detail so elasticity theory deals with a small continue and reversible deformations of elastic materials and elastic materials have following two properties actually it deforms under stress and returns to its original shape when the stress disappears we before we discussed with examples that when stress or force is applied to any material then it's uh, that material deforms but when you remove that load or stress that material returns to its original shape so uh, this is a uh, homogeneous and uniformly distributed in its occupied volume elasticity is homogeneous and uniformly distributed in its occupied volume like before we uh, take the example of atomic atoms when we apply stress the atom positions are changed but when we remove that stress the positions again come to that atoms again come to their original position what is meant by elasticity of polycrystals actually polycrystals are materials that are not uh, isotropic i means they don't have uh, for example if uh, grains and atoms are not distributed equally in that uh, material they have different shape and orientations so they are not isotropic they don't have same distribution of atoms or they don't have uh, same shape of that uh, crystallites are that grains so uh, but uh, uh, instead of being isotropic the polycrystalline materials are also uh, follow the uh, elasticity theory and it is it can be used for polycrystals as well so what is hooke's law it is uh, related to stress and strain it is direct relation of stress and strain so we can say when a material is submitted to an elongation force its deformation is proportional to that applied stress so uh, we can say that coefficient of proportionality between the stress that is sigma and the strain that is epsilon is young modulus and it is denoted by sigma is equal to Young modulus that is denoted by E multiplied by epsilon naught. So Hooke's law, जो है वो uh, directly proportional है. Uh, stress uh, directly proportional होता है strain के. और इसको हम अगर uh, uh, coefficient of proportionality इसकी जगह use करें, तो उसकी जगह हम young modulus use करते हैं, जिसको हम E से denote करते हैं. और यंग मॉडुलस जो है वो है स्ट्रेस डिवाइडेड बाय स्ट्रेन यंग मॉडुलस इज स्ट्रेस ओवर स्ट्रेन एंड इट इज डिनोटेड बाय यंग मॉडुलस इज डिनोटेड बाय ई सो वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट स्ट्रेन दैट इट इज चेंज इन द लेंथ ऑफ दैट मटेरियल डिवाइडेड बाय इट्स ओरिजिनल लेंथ and stress stress is uh, is a force divided by cross sectional area 
so we can represent stress as F over A and strain delta L over L and it is known as uh, the uh, uh, stress over strain divided by strain is Young's modulus and if stress and strain are directly proportional then that is known as Hooke's law. So what is the plasticity? Uh, plasticity is non-reversible deformation in response to an applied stress or force. So plastic deformation of single crystals, how it happens? When material, when a material plasticity uh, plastically deforms, actually what happens? Its surface exhibits, it shows, uh, surface of that material shows slip bands. And these dip bands are the emergence on the surface of dislocations. These slip bands are due to the emergence of dislocation on that surface. And the orientation of these bands depend on the that crystallographic structure of uh, material in which that plastic deformation of crystals occur. So here you can see in the figure you can see that slip direction is on the right side and the uh, slip you can see here slip planes and steps that are uh, known as uh, slip steps and the bands here you can see bands in blue color dark blue color these are known as slip bands so when dislocation occurs these uh, plastic deformation may take place in that single crystals and this depends upon the how the crystals uh, are uh, crystallites are arranged in that material and what is orientation of that bands. So when they slip, there there will be plastic deformation in that material, and that plastic deformation is non-reversible uh, deformation. It cannot return to its original shape. So dislocations are actually uh, a, another type of defect that is present in crystals and dislocations are areas are the regions where uh, that atoms are out of position in crystal structures when atoms are out of position in uh, any crystal structure then we say that that are called dislocations and this location is actually defect in crystal R. This locations are generated and uh, move when a stress is applied. So when this location actually occurs, when you apply any force or stress, then these dislocations may occur and they can move. So the motion of uh, that motion of this location allows a slip plastic deformation to occur. As in previous example, we uh, see that due to dislocations, that emergence of that uh, uh, defects in uh, crystals may occur, and the slip uh, uh, slip bands uh, starts in that material due to which that materials will be deformed. So, what is plane to plane sliding using elasticity? it is possible to calculate the maximum value of stress necessary to remove all the atoms of that plane so for copper mostly 8000 megapascal stress is uh, used at up to that position that material will be elastic if we compare uh, early uh, measurements that are performed on nanostructure materials and then these are compared with the conventional grain size materials like uh, bulk materials or micro materials then they uh, these experiments show that the uh, nanostructure materials has lower young more young modulus value as compared to conventional or bulk materials so uh, mostly the uh, nano materials have less defects they have less dislocations before we discuss, generally we discussed about hardening and hardness of materials. So a hardness of materials occur when uh, the motion of dislocations become difficult, even impossible in that material. So 
that material will be hard in which motion of dislocation is difficult so it that materials will show hard hardening properties or they will show hardness so plastic deformation starts when dislocation scales become very active under that under the under the applied stress तो जब आपके पास जो है वो जो मटेरियल है उसमें डिसलोकेशन अगर फॉर एग्जांपल उसमें डिसलोकेशन है ही नहीं तो उसमें जो डिफेक्ट्स वगैरह नहीं है तो उसमें जो मोशन होती है उसमें जब स्ट्रेस अप्लाई करते हैं तो उसमें डिसलोकेशन को मूव करने की जो स्लिप होने की बैंड्स की एबिलिटी कम होती है जिसकी वजह से वो मटेरियल हार्ड होता है उसकी प्रॉपर्टी हार्डनेस प्रॉपर्टी वो शो करता है और प्लास्टिक डिफॉर्मेशन किस केस में होती है जब आपकी प्लास्टिक डिफॉर्मेशन तब होती है जब आपकी डिसलोकेशन स्केल जो है डिसलोकेशन बहुत ज्यादा होती हैं और डिसलोकेशन जब होती है तो उसमें स्ट्रेस जब अप्लाई करते हैं तो उसमें मोशन भी ज्यादा होती है और जब कोई चीज जो है अपनी उस पर मूव कर जाएगी और दोबारा उसमें वापस नहीं आ सकेगी तो फिर आप कहते हैं कि उसमें प्लास्टिक डिफॉर्मेशन हो गई है तो उसमें प्लास्टिसिटी की जो है इलास्टिसिटी कम है और उसमें प्लास्टिसिटी की प्रॉपर्टी है So what is hardening process when we want to uh, increase the property of that material or we want to make it harder for example atoms in solid solutions create elastic distortions they can uh, create elastic uh, spin or they can create elastic uh, alteration and uh, stress field around them so the interaction between this these dislocations and stress may uh, lead to higher hardness agar aap koi material ko uh, uspe uh, zyada harder banana cha rahe hain to usme aap atoms ko jo hai is position mein karenge ki usme plastic uh, uh, deformation na ho uspe elasticity ho aur jab aap apply kare uspe uh, jab stress apply kare to uspe jo hai wo uski hardening properties maintain rahe सो इन दोनों का इंट्रैक्शन जो है डिसलोकेशन और जो स्ट्रेस है इन दोनों को इस तरह मेंटेन किया जाता है कि उसमें जो है डिफॉर्मेशन ना हो और उसकी हॉर्निंग जो है प्रॉपर्टीज मेंटेन रहे इन केस ऑफ हॉर्निंग प्रोसेस मंग मैनी ऑफ द नॉवल मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ नैनो स्ट्रक्चर मेटीरियल्स हाई हार्डनेस हैज बिन डिस्कवर्ड from many nanostructure materials so in few appropriately sized systems the hardness of nano materials or nano composites exceeds significantly than that of mixture in bulk so super hardness also comes from pure nano particles आप जो है आ, कोई भी मटेरियल है फॉर एग्जांपल सिंगल उसमें यूज कर रहे हैं तो दो मटेरियल्स को उसका कॉम्पोजिट बना के उसको नैनो कॉम्पोजिट बना के उसकी प्रॉपर्टीज को फर्दर इन्हांस कर सकते हैं तो एक बल्क मटेरियल अगर आप लेते हैं उसमें डिफरेंट मिक्सचर आपने यूज किया उसकी बजाय अगर आप उसमें नैनो कम्पोजिट यूज करते हैं जिसमें नैनो पार्टिकल्स और आपने साथ जो है कोई दूसरा मटेरियल यूज किया जिसमें वो प्रॉपर्टीज दोनों की जो है वो कंपाइन हो जाएंगी और आपके पास जो है वो फॉर एग्जाम्पल सुपर हार्डनेस की अगर हम एग्जाम्पल देते हैं तो वो आपको प्योर नैनो पार्टिकल्स में जो है अगर उसमें कंपोजिट्स के साथ आप प्योर नैनो पार्टिकल्स और कोई दूसरा मटेरियल उसको कंबाइन करते हैं तो आपके पास सुपर हार्डनेस आती है फॉर एग्जाम्पल सुपर हार्डनेस फ्रॉम नियरली स्पेरिकल डिफेक्ट फ्री सिलिकॉन नैनोसफियर्स हुज डायामीटर इज फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी टू फिफ्टी नैनोमीटर और दे हैव अबाउट four times uh, greater than bulk silicon uh, have hardness more than that of bulk silicon if even if you apply the uh, pressure of or uh, force of uh, 50 gigapascal still it is greater than uh, it's harder than bulk silicon तो सुपर हार्डनेस हमने जैसे बात की कि सुपर हार्डनेस जो है वो नैनो पार्टिकल्स जो है अगर आप उसको कंबाइन करते हैं किसी उसके साथ तो उसकी वजह से उसकी सुपर हार्डनेस या उसकी हार्डनेस बहुत ज़्यादा हो जाती है एक्सीड कर जाती है बल्क मटेरियल से तो एक्चुअली जो नैनो पार्टिकल्स हैं उसमें डिफेक्ट्स कम होते हैं डिसलोकेशन जो हम उसको इस तरह प्रिफर करते हैं कि डिसलोकेशन कम हों हम उसको नैनो स्केल पर जो है उसको देख सकते हैं ग्रेन साइज को 
तो सुपर हार्डनेस्ट है जैसे हम स्पेरिकल डिफेक्ट फ्री सिलिकॉन नैनोस्पियर्स के एग्जांपल देते हैं जिसका डायमीटर 2250 नैनोमीटर है ये सेंथिसाइज किए गए हैं और अप टू 50 मेगा गीगा पास्कल प्रेशर को जो है या स्ट्रेस को ये तक अपनी प्रॉपर्टी हार्डनेस को मेंटेन कर सकते हैं जो कि फोर टाइम्स ग्रेटर है देन दैट ऑफ बल्क सिलिकॉन Before we talk, uh, talk about uh, dislocations and uh, another term is grain boundaries that is very important in uh, nanocrystals or nanostructures. So properties of nanocrystalline materials are controlled not only by their small grain size but they are also controlled by their interfaces and these interfaces are known as grain boundaries. Or we can say that grain boundary is the is the interface between two grains or crystallites in polycrystalline material. In poly about polycrystalline material, we already discussed that the uh, atoms are that materials uh, that crystallites or atoms or grains are not uh, arranged. Uh, they don't have same shape, or they not uh, they are not in a uh, in proper uh, in a, uh, a parallel manner. So um, the grain boundary is uh, the interface between two grains or crystallites in polycrystalline material. In figure, you can see that uh, what is the grain and what is grain boundary. So nanocrystalline materials are uh, mostly uh, polycrystalline solids with an average crystallite size in the range of 1 to 100 nanometer. So uh, it, if small grain size, it means that uh, they have extremely a uh, large number of grain boundaries. So in nanometer range, it is uh, accepted that uh, the grain boundaries act as a both uh, sources of uh, sources uh, for dislocations. So hardness and strength of uh, conventional grain size materials, whose grain diameter is uh, greater than one micrometer is a function of grain size. So we can say that hardness and strength of micro materials or bulk materials, bulk grain size materials is function of grain size. And the strength of and hardness of manufactured materials increases with decreasing size due to grain boundaries deformation. Toughness, uh, ability of material to absorb energy during deformation up to fracture is known as toughness so a material is generally considered tough if it withstand if it withstands high level of uh, stress and can dissipate strain energy without brittle fracture so all and then we will talk about brittle brittleness or brittle fracture and uh, when uh, we are checking uh, mechanical properties of any material for designing so instead of uh, tough, uh, instead of that uh, strength and hardness toughness is also very important and uh, we should know the uh, this property as well in addition to strength and hardness so what is brittle fracture uh, brittle fracture is uh, the result of rapid crackdown crack growth so uh, as the failure mechanism of high strength materials like nanomaterial is uh, governed by a brittle fracture so the toughness is uh, the key mechanical property that is used in mechanical designing instead of strength and hardness alone so uh, toughness uh, toughening mechanism what we can do for uh, making materials tough so uh, for that purpose multi layering is an important mechanism and we can uh, one way to improve nanomaterial toughness is uh, to combine a hard nanocrystalline phase with a soft metal matrix this is one way in which we can combine hard nanocrystalline phase with a soft metal matrix and we can improve its toughness and toughening can be done using multi-layer design. We can prepare multi-layers of that material and we can make it tough. And number and thickness of layers are combined to get the resulted toughness. So we uh, can 
add different layers, multi layers, which can increase the uh, uh, toughness of that materials. In uh, below figure, you can see that this gray color is for ductile layer, and uh, this is a ductile layer. And uh, the white layer is uh, for br brittle material. So we can combine these two ductile and brittle material and we can get tough uh, material with toughening properties. As we discussed about mechanical properties of materials, advanced materials and their characteristics related to their structures. So, uh, if we consider these unique mechanical properties, then uh, nanoparticles can be used in variety of these advanced materials can be used in different applications in different fields. So, uh, we, here we will discuss some important applications. So, first is uh, tougher and harder cutting tools can be uh, synthesized by, can be designed by nanomaterials. So, cutting tools that are made up of nanomaterials involved include uh, tungsten carbide and uh, you can see titanium carbide these are two examples of uh, cutting tools that are made up of nanomaterials and the uh, these both are much harder and uh, they have uh, much more uh, wear resistant what is wear resistance what is meant by wear resistance it is a loss of material uh, uh, from a surface by means of some mechanical action if you apply some mechanical force or you apply some force and there is a loss of material then we say that this material is uh, up to which force this material can maintain its uh, shape or can maintain its surface and uh, these uh, uh, cutting tools are erosion resistant they cannot be uh, uh, affected easily by oxidation or rusting and these are lost uh, these may last longer than their conventional counterparts if uh, we are talking about the uh, nanomaterials cutting tools that examples are tungsten carbide and titanium carbide they are much harder and they are much wear resistant than, and they are erosion resistant and they may last longer than their uh, conventional counterparts it means they are more stronger and they have much better properties than the uh, bulk materials or micro materials so uh, as we take the example of nanocrystalline carbides as they are much stronger and harder and wear resistant so they are being used in the in micro drills in industry here is the figure of uh, this micro drills below you can see and these are made up of uh, nanocrystalline carbides and which uh, which are which may be tungsten carbide or which may be titanium carbide next application uh, for mechanical properties is Automobiles with great field efficiency are uh, uh, used. As the uh, nanomaterials are stronger, they are harder and much more wear resistant. And these are erosion resistant. Then they are uh, they can be used in spark plugs. Uh, what are spark plugs? Spark plug is a device for firing the explosive mixture in an internal combustion engine here is a uh, figure for spark plugs so in automobiles uh, automobiles mostly waste uh, a large amount of energy by losing the thermal energy that is generated by engine so uh, engine cylinders are planned to be coated with nanocrystalline ceramics uh, such as uh, zirconia and aluminium and which retain heat much more efficiently and they results in complete and efficient combustion of fuels so uh, mostly uh, automobiles uh, uh, based energy in the form of uh, thermal energy in the form of heat 
so uh, engine cylinders that are coated with uh, uh, nano crystalline ceramics examples of these nano crystalline ceramics are zirconia and aluminia these cylinders are coated with that materials which uh, retain that heat more efficiently and they uh, reduce the loss of that uh, thermal energy and make the engine are uh, more efficient and make the uh, combustion of fuels uh, less so next application is aerospace components with enhanced performance characteristics uh, fatigue strength increases with a reduction in grain size of material now we can say that nanomaterials provide a significant reduction in grain size over conventional materials due to which the fatigue life is increased by an average of 200 to 300%. So uh, what is actually fatigue, uh, fatigue life or fatigue? So fatigue is a, a weakening of material that is caused by cycling, cyclic loading or stress that results in progressive and localized structural damage and the growth of cracks. Fatigue kya hai ki jabhi kisi material pe aap cyclic uh, jo hai wo repeated, repeated way mein jo hai aap jab aap different cycles ke saath us pe stress bar bar apply karte hain ya us pe load apply karte hain to wo uski wajah se kya hota hai ki ek uh, jahan pe stress apply ho raha hai bar bar wahan pe structural damage ho jata hai ya crack jo hai wo badhna shuru ho jata hai so what is fatigue like the number of loading or stress cycles of a specified character that a specimen sustains before failure of that specified natures occur in fatigue life ke hogi ki aap jab usko apply karte hain number of loading cycles jo hai us specified material pe apply karte jate hain to wo uski fatigue life depend karta hai ki wo kitne stress ko jo hai wo bear kar sakti hai kitne stress cycles तक जो है उसमें डैमेज या क्रैक नहीं पड़ता तो उसको हम फटीक लाइफ कहते हैं सो इन स्पेस क्राफ्ट एलिवेटेड टेम्परेचर स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ मेटीरियल इज इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज द कंपोनेंट सच एज रॉकेट इंजन एंड वैक्टरिंग नोजल्स ऑपरेट एट मच हायर टेम्परेचर देन एयरक्राफ्ट एंड दायर स्पीड सो दीज नैनो मेटीरियल्स कैन प्रोवाइड fatigue strength and greater fatigue life um, as the size of material is decreased next are ductile ceramics uh, ceramics uh, in bulk if we uh, consider them they are very hard brittle and it is a uh, difficult to design even at higher temperature but with a reduction in grain size their properties change drastically if we compare a uh, nano size uh, ceramics with the uh, bulk materials we say that uh, ceramics are very hard and brittle and it is difficult to uh, design them at uh, very high temperatures but if size is increased in nanometer range then their property properties are completely changed so uh, nano crystalline ceramics can be pressed and sintered into various shapes at significantly lower temperature when uh, these are uh, converted into nano crystalline ceramics then they can be pressed and they can be shaped into various uh, form or they can be calcined or sintered at very low temperatures instead of high temperature for example Zirconia is a hard and brittle ceramic and has even been rendered as super plastic it can deform to great lengths up to 3 times of its original length and however these ceramics must possess nano crystalline grains to be super plastic so a uh, ceramic that are based on silicon nitride and silicon carbide have been used in automotive applications as high strength springs ball bearings and valve filters and because they possess good formability and uh, these have a good mechanicality so these combine with excellent physical chemical and mechanical properties and they have a 
we can uh, prepare different materials from them and these they are also used as components in high temperature furnaces so we can uh, shape these uh, silicon nitrides and silicon carbides for different automotive applications we can form their components uh, and uh, because they have a, a good uh, we can convert them into different shapes and uh, they have a good physical, chemical, and mechanical properties. So they could be used as a components in high temperature furnaces as they can withstand high temperature as well. Assignments that you have to search after uh, reading all these or you can uh, uh, also search out these references I have mentioned here and you can uh, thoroughly study these uh, mechanical properties and you have to find the nanomaterials or advanced materials that are mechanically strong and that have been synthesized and being used in our daily life you can take any example of any material and any uh, mm, uh, daily life example of that material in which mm, these are mechanically strong and which are uh, made up of that nanomaterials.